On tonight's throne cast. An old dog with new tricks. The hound is back. Why haven't they punished me? A queen is scheming in King's Landing. You've lost Cersei. And I is cut down, dreaming of home. <laughs> Joining us tonight is a man who fueled Aya's kill list. There is only one thing we say to death. Miltos Yeromoa, a.k.a. Sirio Pharrell. Not today. Your watch begins. was one of the best episodes of Lovejoy I have seen in <laughs> ages. <laughs> My favourite all-time human killing machine returned, a girl bled into a ravine, and then Ian McShane was found hanging from an adventure playground. We also saw the Starks <laughs> wander around the north like a pair of Jehovah's Witnesses, trying to recruit any man, wolf or child that will fight with them against the Boltons. Poirot needs to up its game. Welcome <laughs> to Thronecast. And joining me tonight on Britain's most flammable sofa, my very own brotherhood without manners, Rob Beckett and Melvin O'Doo. Yeah. So, I thought that was a cracker. First reactions, Rob, what do you reckon to it was, that? It was good. I was worried at the end. Well, I yeah. thought her neck had gone. <laughs> I thought it got her around her throat, but she was all right. But it's, it's, it's worrying, though, if just being stabbed in the stomach three times and falling in a river is a good day out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a double stab and a twist, though, wasn't it? Oh, that was worried it? me. Yeah, that's the twist. You the guys twist. really analysed the, oh, yeah. the pain there. Yeah, yeah, it was quite bleak, wasn't it? But yeah. at least she was walking at the end of it. Yeah, quite That's, dark there. Yeah, but I, I thought they got her throat, but she's all right, isn't she? <laughs> so they... everything's OK? Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. <laughs> Is that what you took from the episode? Um, I was happy to see The, the Hound, another yeah. great episode, and I kind of have a soft spot for him, so good to see that. Yeah, oh, no, and he's got I'm... a massive axe now. That's why he's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> a is massive geezer with an axe. What's going on in your head? Well, if you see a massive geezer with an axe, that's right. exciting, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. He's just gonna... He's always getting axed. Yeah, if you're so... from the ghetto, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you, Robbie, you talk about massive geezer with an axe yeah. and, you know, it's only a flesh wound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's only a flesh wound. Well, listen, the sofa isn't full enough for my liking. Time now to meet a dance teacher who'd make anyone come dancing. A ladies, A, A, A gentlemen, A, A ladies and gentlemen, whatever. Yep, it's Swordmaster, my favourite Swordmaster of all time, Sirio Pharrell, aka the wonderful Miltaz Yeromoa! Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. I get up and I'm nail gun, nail gun down. <laughs> First things first, let's start talking about the return of the Hound. Uh, Miltos, happy yes. to see him back? Of course. <laughs> of course. Really? He's a le Yeah, I love... He's the kind of person you're completely conflicted about when you... Yeah. Well, do you like him? Do you not like him? And look at that face. <laughs> yeah, gone. It's gone. He's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't to, we don't have to dwell on it. Did you ever think he was fully dead? <laughs> I think you don't ever know if someone's fully dead. I mean, it's one of those things that when you watched it, the one thing I could only think about was Aria's got that death look in her eyes. She's like, there's something wrong with that girl. Well, there um, is now. She's been quite heavily yeah, exactly. stabbed. But, yeah. but, but when you last Not saw her, <laughs> when you last saw her with the hound, yes. when you last saw her with the hound, that's when yeah. you kind of go, this doesn't look good. But I always had faith. I thought he was going to come back. I'd, I thought he was going to go. Did you think he was going to come back, guys? Did you have I a feeling? I was surprised that he came, came back, but I did think that Aria had a, a kind of, like, grew to like him as she spent more time with him. I think in the beginning, she kind of all kind of hated him fully. Yes. But by the end of it, she was like, I'm not too sure about him. And they spent so much time together, and essentially, she kind of felt like there was no one else to kind of turn to. So I think that's why she probably didn't kill him at that point. And he mellowed with her as well, because he went from just feeling that she was somebody he'd kidnapped and that he had sort of barter with to a tra he referred to as a travelling companion. So he sort of mellowed. There yeah, was a definitely. sort of weird kinship towards him. And she him. kind of, like, developed... A, he kind of shared his... Uh, healthy sense of cynicism with her. So that was quite, quite amusing. <laughs> Especially when they turned up at the, 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 the you know, the, the, her niece, well, her aunt's place. Oh, yes, who dead. unfortunately went through the, uh, the moon door. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that didn't work out too well. Well, we know a little bit about the hound. Mm. Like, he's not allowed on the sofa. But what about his brother and the house Clegane? Do they all have bloody nicknames? Well, Jamie, the Beard East has got a lot of answers. <laughs> 
House Clegane is the house of Sandor and Gregor Clegane, better known as the Hound and the Mountain. The Cleganes hail from Lannisport and they're loyal to House Lannister. Their grandfather kept the house kennels at Casterly Rock for Lord Titus, Tywin Lannister's father. One day while hunting, Lord Titus met a lioness that attacked him and nearly killed him. Fortunately for him, the Clegane brothers' grandfather walked by with three of their dogs and drove the lioness away. As a reward, the Cleganes got land, a keep and a son to squire for the Lannisters. The three hounds that died became their new house sigil. When Tywin became Lord of Casterly Rock, he had the former Clegane kennel master train his grandsons to kill, just like the hounds. Sandor killed his first man at the tender age of 12. At the age of 13, his brother Gregor towered over most men, and he then became known as the Mountain. It's well known that the two brothers hate each other. My brother gave me this. It was just like you said a while back. Pressed me to the fire like I was a nice, juicy mutton chop. Through Lord Tywin's influence, Prince Rhaegar Targaryen personally anointed Gregor a knight. During Robert's rebellion, Sir Gregor Clegane was one of the Lannister soldiers who raided King's Landing. He murdered Prince Rhaegar's two children and raped and killed the prince's wife, Elia Martell. You raped my sister. You murdered her. You killed her children. Soon after the rebellion, their father died. It's rumoured that the mountains behind his mysterious death, as well as the deaths of their sister and several house servants. Gregor became Lord of House Clegane, while Sandor left the family home to take service at Castle Rock. He became a member of Joffrey's Kingsguard after Sir Barristan Selmy was dismissed. The Hound deserted both the Kingsguard and King's Landing during the Battle of Blackwater Bay. He was captured by the Brotherhood without banners, but they freed him after he defeated Beric Dondarrion in a battle by combat. He took Arya as a hostage and attempted to use her as ransom until Brienne found him and heavily wounded him in a fight. Arya then left him for dead. Meanwhile, the Lannisters continued to use the mountain as a weapon. He was poisoned by Oberyn during the famous Mountain vs. Viper trial of combat. However, Kyburn brought him back from the brink of death. Now it's the Mountain who serves in the King's Guard. <laughs> it's like a joke prop. It's a, yeah, <laughs> a syringe. hell of a syringe. That's what, <laughs> that's what I have to have at the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Do they just use one of those massive mirrors? Yeah. <laughs> Um, we were reminded there um, how a ferocious guy. But do you think now, having spent time, you know, with uh, with Ian McShane, things, <laughs> things have softened a little bit. That he might be a little bit more considerate. Of course not. They've all just been killed. Yeah. So he's going to was... have revenge on it. I mean, he had, that the way you picked up that yeah. axe made me think. Yeah. And I think this is not going to because he's good. not got he's got really soft clothes on. <laughs> at the moment, he doesn't look as scary. But if we had all his metal stuff on, it'd make him look angry, I reckon. So, you... so when he gets to his outfit changed, he's going to even be more intimidating. So the linens are just sort of at the moment, they're yeah. confusing. He looks like an angry so farmer. Cash. Yeah. <laughs> Not a warrior. Well, we... sometimes it's quite, there's quite a narrow divide. Yeah, it depends. If you're, if you're fracking, you don't want an angry farmer you on your really... coat. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think any of the houses are fracking, so we should be all right for the next few weeks. But I, I have to say, I don't, you might not remember this, but the hound called Siri a greasy haired little bastard. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I haven't <laughs> forgotten that. I haven't forgotten so that. You've got hair, brother. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so, presumably, you were, you were invested in him not returning. Uh, <laughs> you know. Well, only from a character's point of view, but from my point of view, I love that character. He is an amazing, amazing character. So, you don't think anything's changed? You don't think his, his, his time there uh, has changed him? You don't think his time with Arya with has changed him at all? I think he's probably... A more, he's more of a goody now. I think initially we thought he was a bad guy. Uh, and I think it just felt like he was in rehab for that whole episode. But I think seeing his mates kind of dead and, and whoever his new friends became uh, on the floor with arrows in them and stuff has kind of taken him back to where he's kind of come from. It, but he, he's sorry. probably got a B-Tech in construction now as well. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So he's got a bit of apprenticeship under his belt before the fighting don't work out. Even more skills. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I have to say, he's a big guy, Rory is a big guy. But I love the use... Rory? Of... Yeah. <laughs> so his... his the, but the use of the camera angles made him look like a giant compared to Ian McShane. I thought that was very clever. So, yes, because you know the heights of what... But you seem... Do you always go from the height first? You sort of look, work with an actor and then measure them? Yeah. <laughs> and then look at the camera yeah, angle. But he just <laughs> looked... How's he to work with C4? <laughs> <laughs> but he looked huge on, sc on screen. And the carrying the massive log, that was fun, wasn't it? That was brilliant. As soon as I log. saw that, I went, that's the hound. 
Well, did. even with the new limp, you knew. Yeah, yeah you knew. Straight we were sitting away. with him watching. He was like, I know who that is. <laughs> but it was it was a genuine joy. I'm a massive fan of Ian McShane, yeah. but that is qu he is riven through with acting quality. Yeah. What did you make of his character, Septon Ray? Were you, were you convinced by the? I mean, no good deed goes unpunished in Game of Thrones. Did you think he was too good to last? He, just, he was a bit of an idealist, wasn't he? He just he reminds you of sort of like you know like your your, your mate's dad is a bit of a hippie. When you're growing up, <laughs> and all the other dads are like, get out, that's my chair. And he's like, look, guys, everyone's got a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be fair, your mate's dad doesn't end up like that, thankfully. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> but murdered by uh, the Brotherhood Without Banners. What, why, though? What, what was the reason for killing them, do you think? They're just evil guys. It's just horrible dudes. Yeah, they're a bunch of arseholes, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> food and steel. Yeah, but did you see all the food was all over the floor? I, I mean, what's the point of that? Well, they've become increasingly lawless, that, that, that bunch. The Hound has a history with, with the, the Brotherhood. Yeah. They captured him yeah. in, in Series 3 uh, and then killed one of them. Uh, we're going to see Beric uh, Dondarrion. You see here, there's the fight. It doesn't end well. Uh, he's then resurrected. So he was the, the first person we saw resurrected uh, after the trial by combat didn't, didn't go down well. But uh, is he going to try and track down the Brotherhood now they've done it? You talked about revenge. Yeah. Is he going to be first on their list? I think so. I, I'm hoping he kills off the Brotherhood and then he finds Arya and they join forces again. That's what I'm hoping. But that good. would be complex. I don't know if... You see, Aya, I don't know if she'd forgive him. She's she alone at the away? moment, and I think she needs someone, and I think he's going to be the one. To Why do you her. think she walked away from him? Is it because she didn't have the stomach to kill him? Or is it because she wanted him to die in agony? Yeah. The latter. Mm. No, I don't think so. Yes! yes. That girl's broken, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, she's, I, I, I love that character. I think she's fantastic. But the great thing, the great thing about that, you know, she, she's someone you want to enact her revenge. You want that. Mm. You know, that's the kind of thing that you want. But they don't give it to you easy. No. They, make, they make it really... There's a lot of conflict. And that thing... With the way that she looked in the, at that moment when right. he said, kill me, kill me, and she doesn't. I, I think it's because there's something in well, it. I don't think just... she, wouldn't be, she, she didn't want to be the one to kill him. OK. No. I don't think she hated him that much. And she's got a hit list. I don't think it was about hate, though. Yeah, that's right. It's about the hit list. I don't think it was about hate. I just think... So he's not on her mission statement, so she's going to let him... She's not yeah, I don't do think she... I think she stopped hating him that much. She was happy to leave him to die, but she didn't want to be the one to do it. She's, she she feels up a bit. deeply, yeah. though. She f she hugely feels. Um, you know, we saw last week. You know, she she utterly was involved with the Cersei character in the play, and then mm. didn't go through with the assassination. Mm. I think she has a huge well of feeling. I don't think no, you can rule her out as a no, no, just, without uh, without a doubt. And I'm not saying that. I just think she went through a period when she was with the Hound, mm -hmm. where. Remember, she'd seen... Troublesome teens. Yeah. yeah, I think she had a bit of a, a hard time then. And now what she's doing is she's regaining her humanity. Well, there's been a lot of speculation online that because he owes his life, the Hound of the Faith, maybe he'll end up being their fighter in Cersei's trial against his own brother. Oh, that, yeah. Well, that's like that. what it feels like it sh that love... should happen. Yeah. It does. That the two should be brought together. Yeah, I love online speculation. <laughs> the best thing about it, isn't it? It's sort of the best speculation there, isn't it? Oh, it's yeah. the best speculation yeah, you can get. So, you Hound versus Mountain, who's your money on? Well, I would like the Hound to win. Yeah. Because didn't the, the Mountain burn his face yeah. in the yeah. first place? Yeah, they're not friends, the two of no, them. They're not mates. No. And he, the Mountain's massive, and he's like, sort of like Frankenstein Mountain. And he's had the Franken massive, Mountain. massive yeah, injection. Franken Mountain. <laughs> so, we don't know what he can do yet, because all he's doing at the moment is just following. You know, Cersei. He's Cersei a bit around. lumbering and silent and useless at the moment, isn't yeah. he? He's and just... Yeah, and yeah. she's, got, he's a scary French, enough she's got a French crop. He's not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Into that gummy... Those eyes. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, like she's having a terrible haircut and they've not brought it up yet and it's getting through lunch. <laughs> I, yeah, be interesting. I, I hope it comes to that. That would be a great trial by combat. That would be great. Brute, brute force, but, but then against passion. I think Hound's got the passion. He's got a limp, though, now, hasn't he? His leg's not strong. Also, the mountain it is slightly wasn't a big limp. Was that? It wasn't a big limp. Oh, I mean, Even a minor limp. Is I mean, I don't, I don't know how you measure a limp. Is that a limp or not? How <laughs> <laughs> well, limp has it got to be to be full limp? We're going to debate on the limp scale where the hound is. Uh, but time for a break, but join us very soon. We'll be talking about Sirio Farrell's former student, Arya Stark. Be warned, some old ladies dish out more than Werther's.
back to a throne cast for a show that is more fun than an orgy on a bridge. Now, that scene reminded me of Fleet Motorway Services, three in the morning, Julie's Pantry. Get quite minty at that hour. There you go. <laughs> orgy on a bridge. Still so much to discuss from tonight's show. Let's start uh, with things over at King's Landing. Now, we were debating last week whether Marjorie's piousness was an act. Fair to say we know now that it is. A very canny one at that. Handed Elena the note with the, uh, the, the House Tyrell sigil on it. You surprised that old No Shoes is, is buying this? <laughs> the High Sparrow? Because he's a, he's a canny soul, the High yeah, Sparrow. Yeah, he is. He is. Do you I think don't... he's got an eye on her and there's just layers of bluff, bluff, bluff? Yeah. It's got to be in there. It's got to be. It's a bit too obvious. The, the first thing you think of is, oh, she's just pretending to do that. But then, if, she's, but if she plays by the rules and does everything right, there's nothing you can get her on. If she's doing everything right by she the hasn't Bible, done anything wrong specifically. No, but if now. she, if she, if because basically everything he always goes, oh, you've done that wrong. That's not yeah. right. And but it's because it's a rule. But if you stick to the rules, and he, she's just waiting for him to slip up, I reckon no shoes. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> oh, no, no shoes, <laughs> But and then, um, then hopefully, then she can try and spin it back on him, get him in trouble. But obviously, an eye on keeping her house safe. I mean, that's her priority. Yeah. yeah. At the moment, Marjorie's a, a smart lady, and I think she's she's playing. Uh, she's playing it's a, all a big act right now, but I, I do think the High Sparrow is a smart dude as well. Yeah. And he might work out yeah. what she's up to. Yeah. 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 She's been the him. best player of them all in King's Landing, I think. She has. But that Jonathan Price is. How, how tall is he? <laughs> He's uh, definitely taller than me, but yeah. that's not saying very in shoes much. Shoes or not? <laughs> <laughs> Cracking scene, the two of the women in Marjorie's life, you've got Cersei and Elena. What an exchange tonight. That, yeah. I mean, that's got to be a big blow for Cersei losing Elena. She's now, she's now left. I mean, who's she got now? Nothing. No one. The mountain. Yeah. yeah. He needs to start doing. <laughs> <laughs> Is what, do we feel he needs to start doing now? Yeah. 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 He needs to start doing. We thought that Cersei's lowest point was the walk of shame. Mm. But I think the fact that, that, that now her power base is so reduced, that's an all-time low. Listen. Jamie's away. Lena's gone. She looks desperate. I've never seen that woman. Do you really think... She, is yeah, it that she, There was a little bit of yeah. desperation in that yeah, in her yeah. eye when she realised that Elena wasn't going to stay. The thing is, we're kind of forgetting how evil Cersei used to be. Everyone kind of feels sorry for her after the, the walk of shame. But she I was... Don't. She, well, you don't. No, I don't. OK, so you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, you're still angry now. <laughs> the thing is, she, she is a, she is a, a B-word. Can I say it, bitch? I've said it, OK. Said it. <laughs> she's a, she's, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. <laughs> she was a horrible woman. She, mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think people have kind of forgotten about that. So we kind of need to remember why she's going through all this now. But it's testament to how good the show is. Yeah. You, you could go from being a massive, b massive B-word. B-word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Massive B-word. In case yeah. my mum was watching, but yeah. I said it now. <laughs> um, but then, you know, over a process of a, of a series, you could feel all that empathy, all that sympathy for her. Well, I, I think, though, she's still awful, but she's just got no power. So she can't be awful because she's got no one that can do anything for her. So she's got yeah. no control anymore. So she can't, even if she is still a horrible person, yeah. she's got no one to use to do anything. And not, not, a, not a woman of the people. So when she hasn't got her yeah. nice sort of rich folk in King's Landing, she doesn't know how to relate to anybody else. That's yeah. it. She's really scuppered. Um, Cersei very much on her own. Uh, Jamie at River Run, of course, with Bronn, one of my favourite characters. Yeah. Nice yeah. to have him brilliant. back in the mix. Just brilliant. Was he 5'10"? Yeah. <laughs> in boots. In, in, in boots. Bigger but, on a horse, bigger on a horse, always. But he's, he's canny, he's wise-cracking, mm. he lifts the show every time he's on Always. Yeah. I mean, um, every line he has is yeah. perfect. I've always loved him, and, it, and it's funny, cos you kind of mentioned Cersei's kind of, a, kind of change of character and how we feel about her, but Jamie's another one. I used to hate Jamie back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But now I love him, he's like one of my favourite characters now. Uh, so it's good to see those two. And his big metal hands, good for a backstab. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> really. yeah. And no one likes that, do they? Yeah. No that was like a pimp slap to yeah. me. Yeah, I know. Especially with a, with a gold, <laughs> gold <laughs> back of the palm. That's yeah. But, you know, it's not, Walder Frey's not the, not the only guy to have received a, a good cop to the face. Here are our five favourite GOT slaps. Oh, great. Ron likes to rule Jamie with his own iron fist. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrion kisses the OBE goodbye. You're talking to a king! Ah! And now I've struck a king. Didn't you read the sign? Beware the dog. <laughs> Perhaps stop bringing up the incest thing, Jamie. They can write a ballad about us. 
the war for Cersei's cunt. <laughs> Trust a bear to make things violent. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed in that, but the bear is a southpaw, which is yes, you don't usually, sure. they're usually not usually left handers bears, but there you go. Um, <laughs> more than a slap tonight for Aria as she was stabbed, as we discussed at the beginning, in quite, in quite lurid detail. Yep. Did any of you see that yeah. coming? Well, I have to say, as soon as I saw the old woman. Yeah, yeah it wasn't just going to be a quick chat on a bridge, was it? See, I didn't see it coming. I mean, obviously, really? we, no. I was a schoolgirl oh, error. I thought we were going to tease it out. I didn't think. I thought the waif might track her as the waif and then put on a face. Yeah, yeah I thought that too. But it, that was much more unexpected. Much, much quicker than I thought. That that revenge and more. And as we said, more than a flesh wound. I mean, you've yeah. really got to worry for Arya now. That is not going to be got over quickly. No. Although, although, those little vials. Whatever's in them, they can turn you blind, they can kill you, they can probably bring you back to life. I think uh, the waif made a mistake, cos Jacken said, don't no. let her suffer. Right. And she missed the neck and stabbed her in the stomach, yeah. so she's failed. Oh. oh, no, that is good. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Now, that is good, yes. That's what I he think. Knows. He knows. He knows. I don't know, know anything. You're the teacher. We should know. know You're on the TV, man. You know. No, no, no. He, he knows. knows everything. No. But I'm just talking about geezers with axes. He knows what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> there is a That's my theory. Anyway. There, is, oh. there is a precision to the requirements mm. of the many-faced yeah, god. Wow. If, you don't, if you fail, you're right. <gasps> Bad times could be coming to the waif. That was incredibly exciting. Syria, of course, Arya's first teacher. How do you think she's progressed as a fighter now? She's, well, she's great. I mean, that training with the waif, I mean, yeah. when she kind of knocked her back, that was exciting. You said um, that it's a, but you're a better fighter if you're troubled, you said to her, which, which is strange, cos one normally thinks of fighting, you need to no, get in the zone. I, I think, no, what he meant was that you, uh, war and fighting comes to you not when you're kind of ready for it. So even when you're troubled and even when everything's falling around, uh, around your ears, that's the time you've got to stay calm. That's the time when you have to kind of like focus. This is familiar territory. This, uh, you know, discussing the House of Black and White. Of course, you know, you, Syria has a strong relationship with her, with the House of Black and White, doesn't it? Well, uh, yeah. Well, no, uh, no. Oh, no, I don't know. Uh, I, he, with Bravos, yes. With Bravos, yes. Not necessarily yes. No. the because he was the first Black sword, wasn't he? He was, yeah, yeah. So he was basically equivalent to the King's Guards. I mean, he led the King's yeah. Guards and yeah. was the finest swordsman. Um, I don't know about you. When I look for unbiased measured responses into the world. I always turn to Twitter, so let's check the tweets we've had for you. Right. Um, and loads of questions. These are great questions. But they all say the same thing. Could Sirio be Jacken? Is Sirio Jacken Nagar? Is Sirio alive? Is he Jacken Nagar? Oh. And there's no way that Meryn could have... Uh, Meryn Trant, of course, there, could, could have beaten him. So, um, what, do you, what do you say about that? I mean, it's, it's more, than a, more than a strong uh, preoccupation I think online. This, I think this uh, happened, I mean... The book readers probably know this better than I do. But I think this happened during the... when it was something that came out of the books, not just a TV show. But it rolls as an idea and it yeah, will yeah, not stop. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's what's so brilliant about, you know, joking apart, that's what's so great about internet speculation is all these incredible theories come out and there's always someone who will back them up and lend fuel to them. Yeah, and so the what mythology, you... though, the mythology it's... that, like, you kind of go, well, of course it could be. But that's yeah. the genius Possibly. of the show is we all can have an opinion. Yeah. And it... I'm still getting over that little file oh, of stuff. Oh, the yeah. yeah. That is pretty wonderful, isn't it? You Amazing. just drop something. Have you, have you read the books? Only up to uh, book three. Wow. There's a hierarchy in it, the book readers and the TV ones. Yeah. Well, now... <laughs> but, but now the book readers are going, come on, George R.R., we're <laughs> lagging behind. <laughs> yeah. um, it's time for the part of the show where I look you squarely in the eye and thank you sincerely for your 62 fighting men when what I really wanted to say was... I was kind of thinking more along the lines of 10,000, you stingy cow. <laughs> By the way, you're late for Help games. <laughs> no. Here's what we call the business, an edited-down version of next week's show. Order your man to step aside or there will be violence. I choose violence. Should I fail to persuade the Blackfish to surrender, and if you attack the castle, honour compels me to fight you. I love Cersei, and if I have to slaughter every Tully who ever lived to get back to her, that's what I'll do.
think of that? It looks wow. like the, the Lannisters mean business yeah. this yeah. time around. I've got a TV boner. <laughs> <laughs> Not really I fun. need to move away. Yeah. How does that, I don't want to know how that is different. <laughs> <Basically, laughs> I'm just excited. <laughs> yeah, properly. <laughs> Are you, Miltos, excited by that? <laughs> TV boner, mate? <laughs> I can no. <laughs> No, don't even start. TV me. Demi. No, don't yeah. even. <laughs> I think, so. I mean, I mean, we wanted the mountain to have a piece of action by the yeah. looks of it. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, there's some good stuff. Someone's isn't? face is coming off. Quite possibly. I love the fact we're excited about that. What kind of world are we living in? I think we've got time for some questions from our beloved audience. So, Helen, I think you've got a question. Um, oh, were you happy to see Mary and Trance gruesome ending? Was I happy? I mean, I was. I was grateful for the, the revenge, that was all right, but it was pretty shocking. Even I had a little twinge of, oh my God, really? That, Merrin, come on! No, but that was, it was, it was gruesome, it was very shocking. But um, yeah, I was moved enough to uh, tweet Ian BT. <laughs> well done, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets their just desserts. And to be fair, for what we found out about Merrin late in that series, he, he got what was coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tweets, I think we've got time for just one more. Um, are you a natural swordsman or did you get training? That's for you, Milton. I, um, I had some experience because they asked me, and for the first time in my life as an actor, I could actually... Uh, you'd say that I could sword fight without lying, because most <laughs> of the time we lie on our CVs. Yeah. Um, so I had some experience, but I got to train with a, a legend called William Hobbs. Sadly, we're out of time, which just leaves me enough time to thank our guests, Rob Beckett, Melvin Adoom and Mil Sosiero Moa. <laughs> we are back next week with Joe Lysitz, Al Murray and Barristan Selmy, a.k.a. Ian McElhinney. Well, since it's my last night in Shaw for a while, Sweet girl. Oh, not today, love. See you next week.